session, I'll try to outline the jazz landscape of Yerevan jazz, underground, frontline, and elite. I will skip references to the methodology and will answer questions if those arise uh, later. Just not to abuse your patience too much. The urban spate is continually developing and rhythmic a body which can concurrently bear the impact of several strata of history and modernity. These layers form various interests of different social strata, youth subculture and urban habitus in their interplay. Every citizen has fragmental collective uh, stock of the urban life. Imaginary other cities uh, within a city also emerge as a result. Apart from the spatial and social interactions, there is a voice, music, sound and uh, space that interact. It's an elastic vibration of elements. The source is located up to a point and it expands in the environment. On the other hand, our perceptions of space depend on our interpretation of what our ears are hearing. The music in its turn can have a major impact on the space and transform the environment. Let's look at the uh, relations between the music and uh, overarching ideology in the abstract Yerevan space, both in Soviet and independent Yerevan context. Let's look at how music becomes the organizer of urban space, impacts and gets affected by those processes and charts the future developments. Let's look at it in the context of Yerevan urban culture, taking jazz as an example. It's interesting how the urban jazz abstraction formed by several groups has a certain impact on the entire image of Yerevan. As a result, it delineates a three-tiered jazz Yerevan. In the post-war and post-revolutionary stage, the newly emerging state uh, faced serious economic challenges one of the way to overcome which was in partial uh, mutual concessions in 21 moscow launched the new economic policy and offered concessions to foreign capitalists lenin has was tolerant towards the new economic policy and it contributed to the smooth entry of jazz into the soviet system and this is uh parna who is considered to be one of the founders of soviet jazz Although NEB was very short-lived, it smoothly raised the big wave of criticism against jazz. It was deemed to be the symbolized symbolism of bourgeois low morale. It was made identical with NEB, was called the NEB man music and isolated from the Soviet new. It became uh, uh, prevalent in salons that were marginalized and uh, suspicious. At the same period in Yerevan, there is a second wave of repatriation that results in resettlement of multi-layered multi-strata population. In the outskirts of Yerevan, repatriates are resettled that bear the Western values and culture who became the foundation for the emergence of the subculture of the Stiliagas. Yerevan outline in the Red Stalin period, frontline Estrada Jazz Yerevan. The second half of the 30s is symbolized by the completion of the process of the formation of the cultural socialist based ideology culture being massive and uh, national in its uh, patterns. The cultural institutions became mechanisms that operated on the benefit of the state. The mass culture mechanism system used jazz as a very convenient uh, propaganda tool. The notion estrada was not yet prevalent in the Soviet system and this replaced also estrada. Uh, the, during the um, NEP uh, denigration, jazz was whitewashed and ideologically was presented as a music of common black people, which helped its Sovietization. The song is the assistant to Komsomol, is a motto that emerged. Proletarian song creation demand came to the forefront that had to be introduced into the broad public and be urbanistic in nature. In Armenia, jazz skips the NEPS 
phase and uh, launches from the red period. Yerevan forms the urban environment through diverse, uh, culturally rich population. The division of the city into urbanist conventional divides took place in a two-tiered uh, arrangement, frontline, uh, progressive and underground, and there was uh, prohibitions that were applied. At the front line of the urban space development, there were two vectors, major concert stages, representative of the authorities and the next was was massive in leisurely fashion in the underground large-scale development commenced at the end of the 40s during the cold war as opposed to the 1948 originating formalistic and mass scale uh, fight against those who bowed before the west Look at the caricature of Konstantin Orbelian. On the one hand, he is presented in an acceptable, within an acceptable norm, wearing a smoking in uh, compliance with the public uh, cultural policy. And the other side is uh, in a fashion uh, specific of the Stilagas, jazz Western oriented um, vector. He used to be a jazz man and the stiliaga, therefore, by the criteria of the, those times. It well represents the dichotomy. The Soviet jazz went down in history as red and hot, uh, inclined towards the American dimension of jazz. This divide is what I'll dwell on at greater length now. The Soviet underground developed in marginalized spaces in the apartments of repatriate Armenians, in studios, in the basements and cellars of universities and factories, other deviant locations. The red jazz was mostly propaganda and was limited to the constraints of the Armenian State Jazz Orchestra and in the 50s the radio and TV Estrada Symphony Orchestra as well as in several state-sponsored small <clears throat> orchestras that were negligible in scale. Apart from state-sponsored concerts, radio and TV also broadcast some of this music underlying the jazz image of the city in virtual platforms. There were also intermediate environments where the Soviet pastime was uh, unfolding concurrent with Western trends. Soviet avant-garde jazz and circus. We had some information about this from Madam Emma's presentation about uh, circus jazz also proliferated in the circus. Jazz entered the USSR in the agenda of Soviet uh, construction as a musical expression of new dynamic of life. This is concurrent with the rhythms of the contemporary city. It's not incidental that the innovative experimental multi-style framework of art in the context of eccentric circus performances yielded to the jazz which was perceived as exotic. The first jazz concerts took place concurrent to circus performances in a leisure format. By the same logic, it's not incidental that the spearhead of the Soviet jazz was not a musician professionally, Barnach, he was a choreographist and a poet. Eccentric circus events were not welcomed by the Soviet Union and were harshly criticized often. A park as an environment for jazz organization. Tamanyan in master plan of Yerevan used the Howard's model partially of a city garden, culturalizing the city. The design was based on the idea that in downtown city there should be parks and major cultural and public edifices. The ideological basis in the Soviet Union was the socialization of uh, leisure. Although open public spaces and the organization of leisurely activities there should have contributed and complemented the process of creating a Soviet person, in practice it resolved elsewhere. In the open public spaces in the number of Soviet countries as well as in Yerevan, large massive park music culture emerged, a genre in and of itself. May you speak slightly slower for interpretation sake? 
the park music was in the 20s western dance music which was performed by amateur brass orchestras it didn't have clear genre restrictions but was mostly prevailing one step to steps foxtrot boogie woogie and other western dance tunes and the brass orchestra playing along these orchestras were called noisy or objects orchestra modifiers a small addition i can't recall the exact date but it's dates back about 10 years the language committee translated jazz into armenian language as brass noise brass noise was the coined armenian word for jazz that was uh, the line and the perception persist to this day basically so the national environment which was intended for the propaganda of the governmental discourse received another meaning by the through the music changing the function of the space an environment which was created uh, intended for the creation of the soviet person acquired a completely different function and performed it in those years the jazz environment was formed in the flora garden 26 poor commissar and philharmonic uh, parks two of these are pictured and the caricature of what's transpiring in those parks is shown in the bottom following the criticism in soviet magazines and press one may uh, conclude that the youth carried away by western ways uh, were large in numbers in yerevan has uh, halfway spaces between soviet and western jazz as Lenin mentioned, all, among all types of art, cinema matters most. Between 30 to 36, movie was the, one of the main ideological mechanisms of organizing Soviet leisure. It has social political significance. Already in the pre-war period, the, almost all movie theaters were accompanied by music because at uh, the period of the silent movie all of the seances were accompanied by background music when the sound movies emerged in the 30s the role of the musician in the cinema changed in the past they were accompanying the imagery but now they had a different function the musical group's function was to play in the intermissions between the films every movie theater had its own orchestra which performed in the lobbies of the film theaters there is this common statement let's go to the movies to listen to some jazz one after the other there were movie theaters built in Yerevan as well in 36 the Moscow cinema was built and an orchestra a jazz orchestra mostly comprising repatriates came into being which two years down the road became the basis for the Yerevan Army, uh, Armenia State Jazz Orchestra creation this is Artemi Ivazian, who is the founder of the Armenia State Jazz Orchestra. This is a segment, uh, an excerpt for his biography. Yes, he is taking part in the May 1 rally, holding a portrait of Lenin. Let's add that in the Soviet period, the movie theaters were augmenting uh, filling in for the absence of the jazz clubs and played a similar function. Almost every movie theater in Yerevan had its own jazz band. You will see this is just a few snapshots. In reality, almost every major film theater had its own. In fact, uh, for Soviet pastime in these epicenters, Christmas, uh, there were movies that had passed the censorship and jazz concerts. Such entertainment events created a confusion and were not immune to Soviet Congress Pravda and other major publications criticism. The public uh, had this mindset about these areas, which is summarized in Let's Go to the Movies to Listen to Some Jazz Phrase the imaginary west and its localization in Yerevan streets and other cultural venues uh, as a result of Stalinist repressions in the 50s uh, Stiliak a subculture emerged Stiliak from the world style or music the Gimbretzis were calling them uh, fashionistas they were following western values wearing foreign clothes listening to jazz but uh, uh, behind the Iron Curtain, they formed their own perception of imaginary West. 
Just culture was um, based on the conviction of existential freedom. That was the basis of social um, subculture movements, reflecting them in music, which resulted in local identification with the other, various attempts there at. The Legas uh, were using Soviet streets and symbolic spaces, identifying them with New York famous streets or other American streets locations, such as in Yerevan. There was Abovian Street, which was called by Stilagas Broadway. I'll accelerate incidentally the space between the Moscow Theater and the small hall of the Philharmonic was also the gathering place of Stilagas Studios, repatriate apartments as uh, an environment for organizing the underground subculture jazz amateur players. This is Yerevan and songs dedicated to Yerevan that reflect on the building of the underground, building of the Bagramian Street and others. So they were informed very well about the development, urban development of the city and songs were created concurrently. I just want to mention Grigor Khachatryan, the painter, and the segment from an interview there with we were uh, reading forbidden literature uh, from the top they were helping us without understanding then surprising how come the youth know so much about the west about jazz and other things in production facilities industrial facilities universities uh, there were jazz environments with the next wave of repatriation serious development of american jazz commenced especially uh, repatriate french armenians had a great impact on the daily culture of yerevan I want to mention here Jacques Duvalian, maybe the senior generation will recognize a French singer, guitar player, uh, architect by uh, training. He worked in the ARM Design Project Institute, also sang, as well as Varujan Kyurerian. Through these individuals, since they had subscription to foreign magazines, journals, and vinyls, LPs, this uh, allowed for self-taught jazz musicians to emerge. Uh, Gurgen, a uh, small excerpt from Gurgen Khanjian's uh, novel, Give Me Your Hand, a little, well, there is a descriptive passage in his last novel about Sanasar and Baghdasar Cafe and how Levon Marhasian, Chico and others uh, rehearse and uh, perform. The last uh, the metal sound of the saxophone uh, declares freedom, spreads in the hall and uh, rolls out into the city. Yerevan State University, Polytechnic and Brusov Institution student jazz bands were also significant, which led to the emergence of the musicians I just mentioned. And the Brusov Foreign Language Institute is where the first jazz festival took place in 1968. Alternative Yerevan, cafe culture, and hotels. Between 1960s and 70s was the period when in Yerevan the cafe culture emerged. The Poplavo, Kazirok, Kaznichok, Artistic, Kopeka, Arak, Skarunk, and other cafes formed public spaces where, outside of the Soviet ideology, an alternative discourse emerged. This discourse was expressed in music through jazz and newly emerged rock. Alongside professional musicians, also other professionals uh, uh, got into jazz and through them Yerevan Jazz Panorama mostly took place in 85-86. Another replacement platform for jazz clubs were the hotels Ani Armenia in Turis Dvin and half a century later with the same enthusiasm Malkhasian remembers how in 1979 in a small cafe in Ani Hotel legendary BB King jammed with him. In the Jazz Yerevan during independence, following the independence uh, for the uh, movement towards liberal democratic capital from socialism commenced in Yerevan, the course assumed reforms and modernization. Soviet jazz uh, gained independence and new demand for a new model emerged. Like the most liberal arts, uh, which tried towards true freedom. New fermentation in culture emerged that uh, came out of the marginal boundaries and developed along several vectors. Uh, 
in the urban cultural environment, elite just came about, mainstream jazz, marginal underground jazz, background, elevator jazz in the cafes, rubbish jazz, as I described it myself in the last decade, uh, there is also open air urban jazz festival and massive in nature, which organizes in the context of urban culture, various jazz environments in open and closed public spaces. The eliter elitization as a new environment since the middle of 90s in Armenia, Himnagon. in the Soviet period, just was not centralized. Just in Yerevan, in the independence years, uh, a converse trend emerges. Jazz is centralized, uh, particularly in Yerevan, especially in downtown Yerevan. It assumes a new status limiting its audience to the elect one. Listening to jazz becomes fashionable, uh, glitzy and elitist. The years of Kotyana rule uh, complete the process of elitization of jazz. Jazz clubs and cafes emerge. Aragast becomes the Yerevan political elite's jazz environment main platform. This process is uh, described by Karin Sersaikian in her memoirs. Instead of Karung, the Tekian Center has been established, but our jazz remains, perseveres. Of course, it's moved from Karung to the Aragast of 90s, but Pavlovok is also dating back to our times, although it transformed significantly. We're still talking about the price hikes and this becoming no longer affordable. The elitization process of jazz is affected by the West pro-Western image of the second pre president, which was emphasized by his penchant for basketball and jazz. Elitization continues to the end of the 2000s when Malchas, Mezzo and a number of other clubs opened up. Aragast yielded its positions. Innovative experimental and club environment comes about. As opposed to the Soviet area jazz environments and open concert formats in the 90s, Yerevan uh, sellers uh, gave birth to jazz clubs one after the other. There were just a few mentioned here. These jazz platforms developed the marginal side of jazz, and during the independence year, they became legitimized. Avant garde folk stop subway clubs and the club later on became a convergent postmodernist various experiment um, platform for various musicians. Beginning with the 2000s in Yerevan, jazz performances take place. Proponents of this were Arto Chunj Boyajan, Armenian Navy Band, and others. Underground jazz receives its uh, final form, which uh, establishes in various clubs, top downtown Lady Jazz, Ulyukhanyan, and others. They get established audience and the new model uh, specific to the Yerevan jazz culture. Jazz in restaurants, uh, massive rabbis environment. The business developed the so-called rabbis jazz. We could draw interesting parallels with the period of formation of Soviet jazz when in 20s and 30s in the parks and salon music, everything was called jazzucha. In this case, jazz becomes a trendy term and from commercial perspective, many musical bands simply attach jazz to their name to become more competitive and more fashionable in the musical uh, landscape. Within the last 10 years, the multi-layered Armenian jazz culture, which was limited to the perimeter of Yerevan, uh, assumes a strategy of decentralization. In other cities of Yerevan, multi-genre musical culture life is organized. Jazz festivals take place outside of Yerevan, which also promotes tourism. Conclusion. In conclusion, we may conclude that jazz is an intercultural communication universal platform with specific structural model, which in various socio-cultural systems performs as a mechanism bearing the ideological, social, cultural, and political impacts, as well as itself affecting significantly the organization of its environment. We can mention that through partial associative maps, a clear abstraction of just culture comes about in the Armenian context, this abstraction be comes determined as a three-tier city. Each tier bears a particular social and ideological imprint. In the Soviet period, it goes through two dimensions, frontal, representative public, and underground. In the 
marginal salaries, which impact in their term the organization of the urban environment, giving it a specific jazz atmosphere. In the independence period, uh, alongside elitization of jazz, the third dimension or tier becomes to some extent unreachable um, jazz environment at the penthouses of city buildings. These trends came on the basis of the jazz resource prevalence in the Estrada movement, which in the independence years instilled in the public a certain conviction or an opinion to view the Erevan musical image with jazz overtones. In the independence period, this vision persisted, but transformed ideologically. In the Soviet period, the Yerevan jazz associations were mostly linked to the Estrada massive jazz-based undercount depoliticized subculture. In the independence period, it was linked to the elitist and trendy trends that emerge from the top elite. Thank you.